this lab, we're going to take a look at how services behave in Linux. And just remember, right, that a process is a running program, like a computer game or a web browser. And a service is really more of like a special kind of program. It runs in the background to do important tasks. And one of the key things is that it's meant to run independently of user interaction. Now in Linux, we interact and manage services with a command called system control or system CTL. A quick what is check will tell you that really what this command does is that it controls the system D system and service manager. And so system D is essentially an initialization service that loads right after the kernel and system start. And system D is actually what is responsible for managing all of the services, but we can interact with the system D service manager through the system control command. And a lot of that reason is just for security and isolation, keeping that core central service manager separate and a lot harder to interact with as a user. So let's see what an output of system control might look like. So we can see from this output here is that we should expect to see units, whether they're loaded, their activity status, and a little bit of a description about what they are. Okay, with all that being said, let's actually just run it. Let's just run system control and see what it looks like. Okay, so this is a lot of new output, and we can see here in the left-hand side that this unit section, really units can be a lot of things. They're services, network sockets, and even timers. So by default, system control allows us to get an inspection of what all of those are. So the system D service manager is a lot more than just services. We actually have other things inside there. And to show you that, if we just go and actually try running the system control command and hit tab afterwards, we're gonna be presented with a lot of options that we can interact with. Now this lab is about services. So to get more specific, we want to work with the service aspect. We can run system control list, and then we can tab a little bit to see some of the options we can work with. If we wanted to go off road a little bit and do some other things on our own, well, we could go and list timers and sockets as well too, but we're just gonna stick with services. So to do this, we need to do a list units and then specify a type of service. So let's clear it and do that now. So first to show a comparison, let's actually list all units. So we'll actually do list units and then tac tac all. And this output will look a little bit similar to the default, but we'll actually get some colors now too with some differentiation. This is a little bit easier to read and we can kind of scroll through it as we need and hit Q when we're ready to quit. Notice now how inactive or dead services are highlighted in red for us to inspect. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead now and change that. We'll go up on our arrow key and then change that tac tac all and instead make that type equal to service. All right, so now we actually have a proper list of just the services, nothing else, no additional timers and sockets inside here, but we're missing something. We're missing those inactive dead services. So let's go back, and if we want to get that information, we just have to add the tac tac all to the service request version of list units. Okay, this is good. Now we can actually see what's not found. This is good for troubleshooting. Say we want to routinely inspect services that are failing. Well, we can just run a command like this as we need and identify that. Or maybe we could query services that are not being used, so they're inactive, and ones that are dead and that will allow an even deeper inspection into how the system is performing. Maybe we can trim some of these out. Maybe we don't need them anymore. So we can throw on the tac tac state equals inactive to the end of the command. Awesome, so now we've been able to distill this down a little bit. Maybe we don't need a bunch of these services. We can optimize the system or just troubleshoot errors. All right, so that's a good glimpse into how the output looks and now we can actually pipe and grep that output, right? So that's where that pipe and grep comes in handy and we can actually search for specific things like SSH. So now we can go in with a little bit more precision instead of just navigating around blindly. And what if we wanted to get now a deeper inspection into the status of the service? Well, we can use the system control status command and then we just have to specify the service name. So let's go and try that now with system control status and I'm going to write SS and start tab autocompleting to show a bit of an example of something. We'll get more into this inside of the networking module, but there are often two types of services when it comes to networking services like SSH. One is a client, one is a server. 
In this case, as I tab autocomplete, you can see that there's ssh.service and then sshd.service. For this example, let's clarify that ssh.service is you as the client connecting out over SSH connections, and then ssh.d.service is actually the SSH daemon. And daemon services in Linux are like helper services, really. They provide additional functionality and often act as more of the server. So in this case, having an sshd.service as a daemon service for SSH means that we're serving SSH. And that means that someone can connect to us with the SSH protocol. Linux is very logical. Just remember that. Okay, so let's go and take a look at what the output looks like to see the status of a service. Okay, so this is the status information of a service. All the important need to know information for us at a glance is right here. We can see the activity status. So if it's active, if it's running, we can see the main PID. We can also see the process as well too. And sometimes there are multiple PIDs related to a service. We can see the memory consumption. And then we have a brief set of logs at the bottom. You can see several entries, and this is coming from logs related to the SSHD service. And we'll see things like what IP address it's listening on, which is us, and the port that it's on, and some information about any type of network exchanges related to SSH, at least for this service. Each service will be different and have a different set of logs and different set of activity like we saw with get it being open inside of the system monitor. Cool, so that's inspecting services, but how do we interact with them? Well, we need permissions as we can see. So if we try to do anything beyond this now, like reloading them, restarting them, we need sudo. So if a service gets hung up, we can do something like reload and we'll need sudo in front and then we'll just try to reload the service without killing it and it'll reload the configuration file. So once we run that, we can do another status check in the service. So system control status ssh.service and we should see several log entries now. Just in the bottom, we can see that the service is reloading. It then received the signal, and then it finally reloaded the service and opened back up again on port 22. Now let's go and actually restart the service, and then we're gonna do a status check again and see the difference. Notice how the logs indicate that this is almost like a clean slate compared to the reload. It's just a fresh start. So that'll save us if a service is hung up, and sometimes we actually just want to fully outright stop a service. We can do that just with system control stop. So now that we've stopped the service, we can see that the state has changed. It's loaded, but that's it. It's not actually running anymore. And we can see the stop request when it was initiated and finally that it fully stopped. And now after a couple seconds have passed, we'll just do another status check just to demonstrate that nothing further is actually happening here. Same set of logs. The service is stopped. So now let's actually start the service. So just system control start. And then we'll do another status check. And now you can see that it's active and running again. And we have the server with the logs in the bottom suggesting that it is starting and it's on that port 22 as expected. Awesome, so at this point we now know how to inspect services, we know how to look for ones that are hung up, we know how to reload them, restart them, start and stop them. So at this point, if our system is not functioning properly, we know now how to inspect the services and find out what's going on. And then finally, there are just two other states to be aware of, and one is enabled and one is disabled. So we want to run the command again of system control list unit, but this time list unit files, and then we're gonna do a type equal service all, but also throw in a state of enabled. Good, good. So this is actually a pretty handy list to inspect what is just generally enabled service wise on the system. We can do the same thing then for disabled. And again, this is just good for general troubleshooting. We get a clean output here of what's actually disabled in the system, just to see what was intently set to not run. Okay, great. So really, that's it for services on the command line. You can see system control is super powerful, and we've only just touched the services part. We won't go into any more in depth, but if you'd like, I'd recommend check it out and see the other powerful features that system control can interact with.